Hi, and welcome back to my series on how to design and build a high converting opt-in landing page with Elementor. This is part three. If you haven't seen parts one or two, go and watch those now. They're at designbuildweb.co slash Elementor landing page. If you've already seen those first two videos, you know the drill. We've built the basic landing page, super optimized for capturing new leads for our client, the Green Building Company. Then we enhanced it and polished the design with some cool, more advanced Elementor tricks. We took the design up a few notches. All great so far, but the actual job of this page is to capture email addresses, new leads, and for that, we need an opt-in form and a thanks page people will see after they opt in. And that's what we'll tackle in part three here today. Let's see what we'll end up with. Now, if you're wondering, we could just put the form directly on the page itself here, yes, but we're gonna have it in a pop-up instead, a two-stage process. Why the form in a pop-up? Well, there are two main reasons, really. One, if the form was just there on the page, the message we're giving is kind of take, take, take. It's, we want to take your email address, and that's not a positive first impression. But with only the button on the page, the message is more give, give, give. We're freely giving something of value to the visitor. They're more likely to say yes. And two, there's the power of micro commitments, a bit of sales psychology. If we can get someone to say yes once to something really small, they're more likely to say yes again when we ask them for something more. So we get a small yes from them when they click the button, and then we're more likely to get a yes from them to fill in the form itself. That's the idea, anyway. I've tested it both ways and the pop-up definitely works for me. Now, there are a ton of different lead capture methods, plugins and apps, some free, some paid, some are all in one. There are far too many to cover. So I'll be showing you what I do. You don't need a paid service to do this. It can all be free. Let's get on with it. And this is maybe not the order that you do this in real life, but it's the clearest way for me to explain it. You can do it in any order you like, really. So firstly, I'm gonna start at the end and make the thanks page first, just so we have it ready when we need it. We'll then make the pop-up itself. It'll be blank at this stage, no content inside it. We'll then assign the pop-up to the button on our page, just to make sure that that important bit actually works. We'll then add the text content that appears inside the pop-up, but not the form yet. I'm gonna leave the important bit to last. We'll be using Elementor to design the entire inside of the pop-up. I'll help you choose an opt-in form solution to suit your own situation. We'll add that form into the pop-up. We'll hook up the thanks page that we made right at the start. And finally, test it all out to see if it works. Fingers crossed. Well, we'd best get on with it. Here's the thanks page they'll see after opting in. Thanks pages are a really important part of a sales funnel and so many people miss them entirely, which is a big mistake. Now there are loads of reasons why your new subscribers should always see a well-optimized thanks page after they've opted in. But one of the main ones is, this is the moment they've already just said yes. They're primed and ready to say yes again. So it's a big opportunity to push the relationship further. Now here, I'm just asking for a social share, which is a fairly low key ask. But there are lots of things we could ask the subscriber to do here instead, like register for a webinar, for example. Notice the site navigation's back? We're more than happy for them to explore the rest of our site now. Quickly over to edit this with Elementor. This is just a basic two column section with heading widget, text, and image widgets. It's as simple as it gets. This header section at the top, it has this image here as a background. Now that's on the column itself, set center right. I'll send you this template, plus the two landing page templates we made in the first two videos, plus a conversion optimization cheat sheet for the page, and a bonus video on how all of this fits into a wider sales funnel. Head over to designbuildweb.co slash Elementor landing page and hit the big pink button. and I'll send you the bonuses. Okay, thanks page done. It's ready for when we need it at the end. Now to make the pop-up and attach it to our CTA button. CTA stands for call to action. We'll put the content and the form in it afterwards. It's just clearer for me to show you that way. You could definitely add the form and the content and then attach the pop-up to the button, whatever works for you. For the pop-up itself, I use the Pop-Up Maker plugin. It's rock solid. It has a ton of options for display and targeting and triggering, and it's free, and you can't argue with that. I've already installed Pop-Up Maker. By the way, make sure you pick this one, 
not this one with the Rocket logo. I don't know, it might be fantastic, but it is not the one we're using here. So in Pop-Up Maker's menu, add pop-up. The first field is for our future reference only, just so we know what this pop-up is in future. Let's have LM5 questions PDF. LM is just short for lead magnet. The next field is for the title that appears inside the pop-up. I'm gonna leave this blank, you'll see why in a moment. In fact, I'm gonna leave all the pop-up content here blank just for now. Down to the pop-up settings, triggers. We're not actually setting any automatic triggers to open the pop-up, we're manually opening it with our button, so we ignore this. Targeting, as it says here by default, the code for this pop-up will be loaded on every page of the site for everyone but we only need the code for this pop-up on our landing page. There's no point in loading it on all pages, is there? So we just need to choose the landing page here. So under Pages, Selected, and just start to type the name of the landing page. You can set all kinds of very fancy conditions here, but this is all we need. Display, Pop-Up Maker comes with some preset styles packaged as themes. I'm going to choose Lightbox. I like that one best. We're gonna edit that lightbox theme a little bit in a moment, but I'm gonna carry on editing this pop-up for a second. Under size, I'll leave it at medium, 60% of the available width of the screen, although on small screens, it automatically stretches to 100% anyway, which is what we want. Max width, I'm gonna set that as 700 pixels. It doesn't ever need to be any wider than that. Click to save the pop-up. That's the pop-up itself created. I also want to tweak a small bit of styling on the Lightbox pop-up theme we chose. So into pop-up themes, we use Lightbox, so edit that. You can change all sorts of styles for the pop-up here in the Lightbox theme settings. These settings will affect every pop-up that uses this Lightbox theme in future. So you only have to do this bit once. And the one I'm interested in is here. Here's the padding, that's space inside the pop-up. And it's currently set to 18 pixels all the way around. I'm gonna set that to zero. Why no space inside the pop-up? Well, because we're going to be using Elementor to design the entire inside of the pop-up for maximum design control. You'll see how we do it shortly, but setting zero spacing inside the pop-up gives Elementor the full canvas of the pop-up to play with. Okay, save the theme styles. We have a pop-up. Now to assign it to our CTA button on the landing page so it appears when we click it. To do that, we come back to our main menu. So click all pop-ups in the menu, and that views the list of pop-ups. There's only one so far. Under CSS classes for this pop-up, highlight and copy the first class in the list, the one with the number. It actually doesn't matter if you choose the one with the number or the one with the title, but not both. So that CSS class for this pop-up is now copied to my clipboard. Now to add it to the CTA button widget settings. So we edit the landing page again with Elementor and click the button widget. And we want in settings, advanced and CSS classes. And just paste the CSS class that you just copied in there. Save the page again. Let's check to see if this pop-up actually works. So we'll preview the page in a separate tab. Click preview at the bottom. And yes, it does. Okay, there's no content in it at the moment, so it's as flat as a pancake. But if we'd missed a step, nothing would pop up at all. It's definitely working. Now we need to create the pop-up content, the content that's inside the pop-up itself. Now you could type directly into the pop-up's content box, but let's use Elementor for the entire pop-up. That just gives us total, easy control of the design. Yes, you can do this with a free version of Elementor or Elementor Pro. So to do this, we need to create an Elementor template. So down to Elementor, my templates, I'll create a new page template. Now, confusingly, it's a page template, but we're not actually creating an entire page here, just part of one. I'll call it pop-up LM five questions PDF, just a naming convention that makes finding it in the templates list easier later on. First job, in settings, down at the bottom left, I'm gonna change the page layout to Elementor Canvas. We just don't want all this stuff from our theme inside our pop-up. I'm gonna drag in a heading widget and a text widget now, and I'll fast forward for speed. So here it is. Now the form will go here when we make it in a moment. The text just tells people that they're subscribing and exactly what for, and also a link to our privacy policy, which is very important. 
Of course, the text is a bit crushed to the sides, and when this template is inside our pop-up, I want there to be more breathing room than this, more padding. So in the section itself, I'll add a good amount of padding all the way around the inside of this template. Okay, inner content for the pop-up, done. Now let's add this template into the pop-up itself. To do that, we need to grab this template's short code. So I'll come out of here and exit to dashboard, and then into my templates. So here's the pop-up content template we've just created. I have Elementor Pro installed, so the short code is just here, really easy. I just copy it, and then come over to my pop-up, and paste it into the pop-up content field, and update. If you don't have Elementor Pro, well, you don't have the easy short codes. No worries, just install the free Anywhere Elementor plugin. It's this one here. There is a paid version of this available too. It's called Anywhere Elementor Pro, but you don't need that for this purpose. Once it's installed, you grab this short code instead. And you replace these X's with the ID number of the template we just created. To find that, well, the easiest way, if we come back to the template library, click into the template, and then in the address bar, in the URL where it says post equals, that's the number. So just to show you, I'll add this one to the pop-up as well. So I paste it in, and then replace with the number from the address bar. Now, of course, in real life, you only need one of these shortcodes, either the Elementor Pro version or the free Anywhere Elementor version. So I'll get rid of this one now. Let's test that. We'll come back to our landing page, click the button, and there we go. So there's our pop-up, and it appears because we added its class to the button on the page. And the content inside it is the Elementor pop-up content template we made, pulled in with a short code, all good. But we're missing something important, the opt-in form. Uh, your choice of opt-in form depends on a few things like your budget and which email marketing provider you're using. Well, there are far too many options to cover them all in depth here, but there are broadly three main choices, and I'll do my best to outline those here for you. I've got to say, some people do get a bit upset when I don't cover their exact situation in detail. Please don't be angry. And firstly, if you have Elementor Pro, you can use the built-in form widget. Add the form, that's it. Now it's perfect for this. You have full easy control over the form design and it directly integrates with a lot of the most popular email marketing providers like MailChimp, and Drip, ActiveCampaign, GetResponse and ConvertKit. Now it's easy to set up and have it send new leads to your email service. A second option, while well, all the email marketing platforms provide embed code for their sign-up forms, you would just copy the code and paste it into the pop-up. Now there are no integration worries with this method. The form directly talks to your email marketing provider. And sometimes you can only get certain functionality if you use their own embed code, like tracking the user's location, for example, if that's important to you. But usually, you don't have much control over the form design unless you know a bit of CSS. But often the forms look pretty good out of the box. It's worth a try. And a third option, you can use a separate WordPress form plugin. There are loads of them to choose from. I really like Caldera. It's simple, it's powerful, and it's likely free for what you need. Although there is a paid version for more functionality. You usually just create the form and then grab the shortcode for it and pop that into your pop-up. It's really easy. Sometimes these plugins will have direct integrations with your particular email provider, sometimes not. But even if it doesn't, we'll fix that in the part four video next. And there are of course WordPress plugins that handle all of this lead capture for you, like Convert Pro, for example, which is a great paid plugin. And there are a ton of other form builders and lead capture services that have nothing to do with WordPress that you can still use. But like I say, way too many choices to cover in this video and we need to press on. But you should have enough there to go on. And hopefully after that, you're not too angry at me. Right, we're back in the Elementor pop-up content template. I have Elementor Pro, so I'm gonna use their form widget here. Again, if you don't have Pro, either paste in your email provider's form embed code here instead, 
or use a free form builder plugin like Caldera and paste their shortcode in here. If it's a shortcode, drag in the shortcode widget and paste it in. If it's HTML, well, just use the HTML widget instead. Oh, and by the way, I'll be setting the Elementor form to redirect to the thanks page. There'll be instructions on how to do that for other form providers just after this section. Okay, I'll drag the form widget in. Ideally, we want the fewest possible fields. The less we ask people to fill in, the higher the conversion rate, meaning the more likely they are to opt in. So we can get rid of the message field. There are good arguments for and against asking for first name on a form like this. Personally, I like it. I like greeting my subscribers by name. If it puts some people off, I'm okay with that. But the only way to really know what works for you is to test both. I'll click into name. I'll change the label and the placeholder to your first name. Do not make this a required field. If someone doesn't want to give the name, they don't have to. Then edit the email field. I'll change both label and placeholder to your email. And yes, email address is required. No point otherwise. Input size can be medium. Let's now hide the actual labels. So visitors can't see them, but they're still there in the underlying code, which is important for accessibility. Submit button. I'll use the same text as on the main page button so it's all consistent all the way through. I'll add a yes to it just to make it feel like the transaction has moved on a bit, a bit of positive affirmation. I'll make that button medium too. Buttons don't have to stand out as much in a pop-up because they're not competing with the rest of the landing page. Under actions after submit, here's where you tell Elementor what you want to happen when someone submits the form. First, we'll remove the default email tag. That's what's showing the email settings panel here. This is all great if this was a contact form on a contact us page, but this isn't one of those. Then in add action, notice we have several email providers in this list we could choose to send this form submission to. But we'll be covering that in part four, and that'll show you what to do if you don't use Elementor Pro or your form provider doesn't directly integrate with your email marketing service. So I'm gonna skip all that for now. What we do want here right now though is redirect. When this form submits, we want it to redirect to our thanks page. I'll choose redirect. Under it, a new panel opens. So we paste in the full URL of our thanks page. To grab that, you just visit the thanks page in your browser and grab the URL from the address bar. And I'll update this pop-up content template. You might be wondering, how do you redirect to your thanks page if you're not using Elementor Pro? Well, if you're just pasting in your email provider's embed code, you set the thanks page in their control panel where you set up the form. So as an example, here's mine in Drip. And if you're using a WordPress form plugin, well, you set the redirect page in the settings for the form that you created. So here's an example in Caldera. The moment of truth. Let's test this. So back to our landing page. Click the button, fill in the form, and hit submit. And there's our thanks page. Brilliant. And we now need to send the captured email addresses over to our email marketing provider. So next, in part four, the final part of this series, we'll integrate the opt-in form with our email provider. Whether your choice of form has a built-in integration or not, the link to part four is below this video. And don't forget your three bonuses to get better results from all of this faster. Grab those from designbuildweb.co slash Elementor landing page. If you found this video useful, do me a favor, subscribe to my channel, give me a like below and leave me a comment. I love to read your feedback. It makes all of this worthwhile. Now head over to part four for the final installment of this series. Link below. I'll see you soon.